Hey, it's James here from goodguitarist.com. And today I want to go over something that is an essential skill for anybody looking to become an intermediate guitarist. It's probably one of the most asked questions. I see this all the time in the comments down below, as well as in the good guitarist community group on my website. So I figured I'd make a special lesson to address this. Um, I'll actually start out by showing you an example so you can see this problem for yourself. Let's pretend that I'm somebody who has been playing for a few months. I'm learning to strum some chords. My transitions are getting pretty good. I'm able to, you know, add a strumming pattern and keep up with the song, but it still sounds like this. And you probably noticed how messy some of those chords sounded, you know, especially the D chord. And that's because when you're taking my lessons and, you know, learning these songs from me, like there I was kind of playing a chord progression from I'm Yours by Jason Mraz, kind of. Um, you know, I'll say the D chord uses these four strings. Well, what do we do about these two thicker strings? You know, and there's usually a couple strategies that I'd share. One of them is to just kind of aim a certain way to avoid them. You know, like instead of strumming through all the strings, just strum at the top strings, like with a smaller motion. But that's not a good long-term solution because it affects the flow of your strumming. Um, you know, when you watch anybody play acoustic guitar at a professional level, or even somebody who's pretty good and they just show up at the campfire and everybody's singing along, they're strumming with a steady and constant motion. You know, they're not changing the angle, they're not adjusting anything as they change chords. And this provides like the maximum amount of groove so you can feel the music. And they're able to achieve that by muting the excess strings with their chord hand. So it's kind of like a hidden part of chord shapes that nobody really talks about when you're just getting started. So you might be wondering like, why don't people mention that sooner? And that's because you need to develop the finger strength by playing with your thumb on the back of the neck. You know, you need to be comfortable with that first, build up the muscle in your hand between your thumb and your index. And then once you're good with that, after a few months, you can start to play the chords in a bit of a different way that allows you to mute them. You know, so if you're at that point where you want your playing to sound cleaner and more precise, this is the next step. So I'm going to show you how to do this for all the basic campfire chords in this lesson, because um, once you get past that into bar chords, there's a totally different technique. And I'm going to cover that in a separate video. Now, before we begin, please take a moment to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, uh, like the video, do all that stuff. And that way you'll be notified when that next lesson comes out. And if you've already subscribed, I do want to take a moment to thank you because that really does help me out. To all of you who are taking my premium courses and supporting me that way, uh, a special shout out, you know, because I really do appreciate that. Anyways, when it comes to the basic chord shapes, I'm just going to pop them in the corner here. You know, there's 10 in total and some of them we don't need to mute at all. G, E, and E minor, they all use all six strings. So we can just strum all the strings and everything's going to sound great. No muting required. And if you need help with any of the shapes here, I recommend checking out my free ebook. I'll put a link to that in the corner. It's free for all my subscribers. Anyways, let's move on to the A's and D's because they're all muted in a similar way. So I'm talking about A major, A minor, D major, and D minor. For A major, we're supposed to hit the top five strings and that means we wanna avoid the thickest string. And the best way to do that is to reach your thumb over the top and lightly touch it. So you no longer have your thumb on the back of the neck, you have it over and that's where this technique thing comes in. You know, once that muscle's strong enough, you can start to do this stuff. And you know, that just completely mutes it. And whenever I show people this, the first thing that they say is my hands are too small to do that. And believe it or not, I've taught in-person lessons where somebody says my hands are too small for that. And on occasion, they'll have bigger hands than me. So that kind of proves that a lot of it has to do with technique. Now there 
are people out there who do truly have smaller hands. Maybe they're below a certain threshold in order to do this on a regular guitar. And if you're in a position where you really do feel like you'll never be able to reach over that, like you've been trying for months, still not happening, uh, even with the improvements in technique, which I'm going to show you in a second, you can get a smaller guitar where the neck is thinner and it will be small enough for your hand, you know, and that might be the path for you. Either way, let's go a bit more in depth on this technique. When you're first getting started, you'll, you'll want your thumb on the back of the neck, you know, and we play A like this. But as I mentioned before, once you're at a certain point, you can budge your thumb up and you're going to cinch the neck like this. Let me just see how my hand is kind of coming up. And the more, the more up you go, kind of like a throttle on a motorcycle, you know, the more up you go, the more your thumb can reach. If your knuckles are forward, your thumb loses that reach, but your fingers get more arched, which is good. So it's a compromise. You know, you want to have as much arch as possible by cinching up to the neck and give your thumb that reach. And sometimes you'll lose the thinnest string because it'll be like touched by the, a bit of your palm or whatever but that's totally fine if it cleans up your entire chord shape. I just want you to keep in mind that you are not supporting the guitar with your chord hand. You know, you want to be able to let go, even though your hand is right up against the bottom of the neck. That's another reason why we don't want as newer students to do this is because they'll start to let that hand support the guitar as they're switching chords, adds a ton of tension, slows down your chord switching speed. So make sure that, you know, proper positioning. I'll put a lesson in the corner if you want for my advice on the exact way to hold a guitar properly. If that is an issue for you, you know, the test, if you let go of the guitar and it droops, you're not holding it right. You have to be able to let go with your chord hand and it doesn't even move. Anyways, the next one is A minor and it feels pretty much the same. You know, our fingers are in a bit of a different order. Uh, your hand kind of changes angle a little bit. Like when you're doing an A chord, if you look at my hand relative to the fretboard, it's more like that. And as I do A minor, it's, it comes in a bit more. So you will have to get used to it, but it's the same concept. You know, you just get your thumb over the top just enough to lightly touch the thickest string. And it's the same deal for D and D minor. So, you know, you aren't really relearning all the chord shapes. You're just getting used to being in this slightly different position. That's already four chords that all share that same position. Like if you look, as I move between these chords, my hand's pretty still, like I'm not, I'm not like moving it all over the place, right? A little trick here with the D chord, you can actually press the second fret of the thickest string and that makes D over F sharp, which is uh, really useful, like, you know, for playing certain songs. Now, the next chord shape that I want to teach you how to mute is the C chord. And for this one, we're going to go back to putting our thumb on the back of the neck. You know, it doesn't have to be over the top. And we can play our C chord as usual. We're just gonna put our ring finger a little bit higher so it rests just underneath the thickest string. So it's pressing the third fret of the A string, but it's also resting underneath the thickest string. And that mutes it. And I love, uh, you know, that version of C. That should become your absolute default way to play a C chord from now on. Um, you can also do it with your thumb over the top, the same way as A. But, you know, in my opinion, C is the most difficult of all the beginner or all the basic chord shapes to get perfect, you know. So having your fingers curled enough and all that, it's so much easier with your thumb on the back of the neck. And you definitely want to focus on that first. But once your chord is sounding solid, you're welcome to try to get your thumb over the top and, you know, see if you can make it all ring out. But in my opinion, that's definitely the trickiest of all. And we can use the same concept for the B7 chord. So I'm playing the B7 chord as usual. My middle finger's resting underneath the thickest string. I know a lot of people have trouble with the B7 chord in and of itself. Uh, and this is just adding one more thing to the pile. But yeah, um, it's definitely worthwhile. You can also do the thumb thing over the top. You can do the thumb thing for all of these and it does work great too. And finally, last but not least, we have F. And just to alleviate any confusion, the way that you'll probably see it is like this. You know, when people are saying, you know, now we're going to play an F chord. 
and that's the F bar chord and everybody has their own easy version of it I recommend this one right here skip the thinnest string first finger on the first fret of the B string second finger on the second fret of the G string then our pinky finger on the third fret of the next string our ring finger just above that on the third fret of the A string so from the thinnest string we're skipping it then one two three three and we have to mute both the high and low E strings. And the high E string is gonna be muted by the underside of your index finger. And you're probably gonna do that automatically. You know, based on the way that you grip a chord, there's this really good chance that the thinnest string isn't gonna ring out anyways. Uh, you know, and if it is, you just have to cinch in a bit with your hand. Just kinda, you know, bring it in a little bit. And for the thickest string, we use our thumb. And this is a really comfortable one, you know, like when I um, am teaching one-on-one -on -one lessons, people do usually grasp this one fairly easily compared to even like the C chord or some of those other more quote-unquote basic shapes. And you can move that anywhere up and down the fretboard, you know, once you're used to it, muting those outside strings, you can play B flat, G sharp, you know, you can play tons of chords and that's the benefit of a movable shape that doesn't have any open strings in it. But you know, I don't really want to get into that. That's more like bar chord territory. As for today's lesson, that's really all I wanted to talk about. You know, it's just to show you the conventional ways to mute the 10 most common chord shapes on guitar. As far as practicing this, it's just a matter of taking a chord progression or a simple song. You know, I have tons of two chord songs on my website. I'll put a link down below for that. And you just go back and forth between like a chord that you're not muting, like the G chord, and then maybe the C chord, for instance, you know, and you, you do the G chord and then you switch to C and you try to get that mute and make sure it's working. You don't have to do it with the song or anything. You could just test the strings, switch to C, you know, and do that a few times till you start feeling pretty comfortable with it then trying it with songs and then you know for sure that you have it, right? We're kind of like building up a new habit on top of some existing good habits. So we're just making our habits even better, you know, and adding one little thing and going through it slowly and concisely like that is definitely gonna help. And if you would like a thorough approach to learning everything that you need to know in order to sound good on guitar, you know, to just be able to show up at a party or a campfire or even just your own living room, and you know, play for your spouse. My course, Learn Guitar Once and For All, will help you with the chord transitions, the strumming, having that internal sense of rhythm, you know, all the stuff that you need in order to sound like a confident guitarist. And I'm gonna put a link to that in the corner. Otherwise, don't forget to check out my free ebook. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more lessons like this. Have a fun time practicing and I'll see you soon.